Welcome brethren, this is Divine Revelations Nigeria YouTube channel, a channel dedicated to the ministration of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose sole purpose is to create the world's largest archive of Jesus' testimonies with the vision to save souls, build community, and set people free, through the testimony of Jesus. But before we begin today's testimony, I want to ask you to subscribe to this channel, like, share and activate the notification bell to receive updates on new videos. By doing so, you will help our ministry reach more people. It is also important to share this video on WhatsApp and Facebook, as it can save lives, as many people may need help, and you will be used tremendously by God in their lives. God bless you and thank you for listening. Amen. So let's get started. Do not glory yet by Abraham Yakubu. Preface, The Death Experience of Pastor Abraham Yakubu. This is one of the testimony that shocked the world because of it heart-piercing ordeal been unveiled by Pastor Abraham Yakubu from Kogi State who hails from a Muslim back group, and later become a Christian and obtained the grace of God in beholding the heavenly realm. This divine revelation of Pastor Abraham Yakubu titled, Do Glory Not Yet simply means, in your quest and zeal in serving God and making heaven do not glory yet, because the devil hasn't given up hope on you. The devil still believes you can fall from that high mountain of holiness and righteousness. As you read this testimony, also ensure you pray afterward for the special grace never to miss your heavenly glory at last in heaven. Brethren, give the diligence to make your calling and election sure. 1 Peter 1 verse 10, Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances, and art found wanting. Daniel 5 verse 27, the two feet land at a point where there are so many dead persons queued in a line that you cannot see the end. You are the last and so you stay at the back. Within that minute of your arrival, when you look behind, other dead persons that must have lined up will be more than 5,000. That is where I discovered that there are about 5,000 dead every minute, multiply that by 60 minutes and by 24 hours. Can you now imagine the number of dead per day? In heaven, there is neither day nor night. Reflect this in retrospect to our own world, a day means morning and night. In heaven, on a very good day, only five people might make heaven, sometimes three, two, or even one person. Sometimes nobody at all. But on the other side to hellfire, the multitude that troop in there is like the sand on the seashore. As a believer, there is a moment when you were saved and all your sins were completely forgiven. After your salvation, all the sins you committed and did not repent of them before you died, will all appear on the television screen. Some take their liberty in Christ to be an occasion of the flesh, Galatians 5 verse 13 4, Brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another, forgetting, or is it neglecting? 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, Hebrews 12 verse 14 Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. That is why some, born again, will be, weighed in the balances, of their lives after being born again, and, will be, found wanting. Daniel 5 verse 27 Tekel, Thou art weighed in the balances, and art found wanting. Chapter 1 Introduction I was born into a Muslim family in Ihima, Kogi State, Nigeria. My name is Eliasu and my father's name, surname, is Yakubu. My brothers are Karim and Lamidi. I know that many of you have been in the work of the Lord before I was born. Even when we talk about being an evangelist or pastor, many of you have been evangelists or pastors long before my mother gave birth to me. This morning, God himself addressed me and explicitly said, Abraham, don't celebrate yet. The message I heard from God deeply touched my heart. It's on this very message from God we shall talk about this morning, or whatever time of the day it is that you are reading this, as I address you, a minister of God who has been serving God for a long time, you, who have just started in the ministry with God, and you who may not even be born again and so carelessly living your own life without God. The Lord is saying that we should not glory yet. That in this ministry, we should not say yet, I am competent, I am somebody, or, I have arrived, except we see the end of the work. It is not just to finish the work, but to finish well that matters. That is when the owner of the work takes us to his side and we drop our sword by the knee of Jesus. 
then, we can now show our glory and say, Praise the Lord. Read 1 Corinthians 9 verses 15 to 17, 24 minus 27 15, But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me, for it were better for me to die, than that any man should make my glorying void. 16 For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me, if I preach not the gospel. 17 For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. 24 Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run, that ye may obtain. 25 And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. 26 I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. 27 But I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Philippians 3 verse 10 That I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. 2 Timothy 4 verses 1 to 8 1 I charge thee therefore before God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. 2 Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. 3 For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. 4 And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. 5 But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. 6 For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. 7 I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. 8 Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. And Luke 13 verse 22 And he went through the cities and villages, teaching, and journeying toward Jerusalem. Most of our emphasis shall be on these passages, so don't forget what the Lord told me, Abraham, don't celebrate yet. The mission on our hands is a mission with absolute faithfulness and truthfulness and is a work that must be done with fear. It is a mission with high expectation that at the end of the day, the owner will salute us and say, Well done thou good and faithful servant, Matthew 25 verse 21. I pray in the name of Jesus that we don't end up miserable at the end of our lives. When you work as a minister, don't do it because of any other thing rather than being faithful and truthful to the one that called us. I have determined that whatever it will take, I will make God happy for choosing and sending me to do His work. Anything contrary to this will is bad. I would like to say something that it is very unfortunate, that somebody left God's place, God created all men and women, so we are all products of heaven, and came to this world, and yet ended up in Lucifer's place. This is unfortunate. It is even most unfortunate to call such a person a Christian who has testified to be born again sometime and at the end of the day, he cannot return to God whom he has confessed to being his Savior and Lord. It is rather unfortunate. Chapter 2, The Accident Father told me, Abraham, don't celebrate yet. We all came to this world one day and one day we shall all leave this world. Everyone is entitled to death and there is no way out, death is inevitable. I will die, everybody must die someday and this death we are talking about can come at any time. Death met me inside a vehicle, it can meet you inside your houses, in a ship or airplane. There is no place death cannot occur. I would like to share with you what happened to me. What you should first know is that I obtained mercy and got grace from God. So many people of God and many ministers of God have left God and did not return back to Him. But He gave me the grace and some other people like Bro, Sambo, Moses, Sis. Cecilia etc. who left this world and were permitted by God to see so many things in heaven and hell, and were later returned back to this world. A man of God called me for a revival and I went. There is this man of God, who attended this revival with me, Rev. J. F. G. Ikupamisi and God worked miraculously in this revival. But as I was going back, my mind was telling, be prepared, you are going to die. But I said, you demon that is speaking to me, the Lord rebuked you. 
I will not die but live, so as to praise the name of the Lord. But I heard, Abraham, this is not the voice of the devil, I am the one, your maker. This vehicle you enter will be involved in an auto accident and you will die. Therefore, be prepared to meet your God. My people and the Lord, I obtained mercy. A prayer point came to my mind and this is how it went, I have never prayed like that before in my life in the name of Jesus, every sin of my grandmother, the sins that they conceived me with and all the sins I have committed since the day I was born until this very moment, that will make me leave this world without making heaven, O Lord, wash me with your blood and forgive all my sins. That was how I continued to pray. As soon as we left Guru Maharaji spot on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the tire of the vehicle exploded. My people in the Lord, not that I was sleeping, the vehicle somersaulted and after sometimes, the Lord appeared to me as if it was the break of dawn. I looked at the other side, I saw several vehicles parked along the road. The vehicles going to Lagos parked. When the vehicle first somersaulted and landed, it landed by my side, so that affected my back and spinal cord. I heard a noise from my back and there was an iron in my front pressing my chest and I was compressed in between. I was groaning in pain and crying, please, come and help me, please, come and carry me, though I was crying for help, people were not hearing me. Please hear this, it is now that you still have the opportunity to talk. You can still call on God now, you can still amend your ways and you can still plead with God today. But a time is coming, when you will be talking to people standing beside you, and yet they will never hear you. After some time, I managed to release myself and the iron that was pressing me. That was how I came out of the vehicle. I saw some people sitting down and they were showering them with water. I never knew that there was blood all over me and I was telling somebody that nothing happened to me, but he was telling me to be patient I said again, there is nothing wrong with me, and for you to be assured that there is nothing wrong with me, let me take some steps and walk. When I took the first step I realized I was in the mood to run and I started running, somebody shouted, get hold of him and don't let him fall. Someone met me, gripped me, and laid me down. I was feeling very thirsty and shouting, please help me, I am thirsty, please help me, I am thirsty. And a good Samaritan brought some water for me to drink but another person was opposing it, saying don't give him the water, because if he should drink the water, he will surely die. People of God, that thirst of water that day was because of the great loss of blood. Don't forget the Savior said on the cross that he was thirsty. The thirst of our Lord Jesus Christ is all of us seated here and all souls in the world, how we should live in our journey on this earth so that we do not end our journey in modernity and end up in hellfire. I later heard that a man and his wife, who were both medical doctors, were coming all the way from Elorine and the Spirit of God ministered to him, saying one of my servants is in that vehicle quickly take him to the hospital before he dies. He was the one that took me to the hospital, he also paid my medical bills and I never knew him before. My prayer is that one of these days, as I will be testifying like this, that he will come out of the congregations to meet me. At this juncture, this is the end of a part of my life story, and I pray that all of you will not have a reason for hospitalized this year. And for those of you who are medical doctors, I pray you shall be successful in treating your patients to recovery. Chapter 3, The Revelation Now, let's take our minds back to the hospital. Let's imagine somebody on a four-wheel bed, placed on a drip and the only thing he can do is cry help. Help! Help! They brought him breakfast and he cannot eat. Lunch also, he cannot eat it, likewise dinner. I can imagine a doctor or nurse coming and carrying out cross-examination on the patient, even if they know the patient is going to die, as it is in their professional ethics, they will say to the family, no problem, he will be fine. Just be prayerful. Now imagine that the doctor is gone, the nurses have also gone and now is the time for such a person to go to his eternal home. It is good to always think about. Please do not be angry with me, because death is inevitable. This is one topic we don't think about every day. When it is time for him to go, and usually this is what happens, he will continue breathing high, and at that moment the family will be disturbed and will run around, calling on the doctor, the nurses, and on anybody available to revive him. And from breathing high, he takes his last breath, and that is all. At that moment, he will give up the ghost. The real self will come out of the physical body naked, and we shall return in nakedness. That day, he shall leave this dust called in nakedness, he will want to touch the doctor, but the doctor cannot feel him any longer. He will be asking himself, what is wrong with me? 
After some time, in realization, he will ask himself, am I dead? He will lift himself up and down, and later throw himself through the wall. You see, it is only your body that cannot penetrate a wall, but your real self will diffuse through the wall at a very high speed, an uncontrollable speed. And suddenly he will see himself on white sand with small granite stones. People of God, this place I am talking about, there is no hill nor mountain, no water, nor tree, it is just empty flat land. And the spirit will be wandering and asking himself, where am I? What am I doing here? Some people will be coming from far and they will be approaching gradually, and his heart will be troubled. After some time, somebody will touch him at the back and he will ask the person, please where am I? The angel will tell him, son of man, you are dead, you have left your body behind. Now look this way. When you look at the other way, it is also without end. You look at your back, the field has no end. The Bible says that the Lord is your shadow at your right hand. Listen to me, in this world, your shadow never means anything to you, or have you ever thought about your shadow? Shadow means nothing to you. That is why on the last day you too will mean nothing to your shadow. And when you look at your shadow and ask, please, who are you? The answer will be, yes I am your shadow and I have been with you all your life. If you happen to be a backslider or a sinner who has never repented before, the shadow will twist the hand back and puncture the thumbs, then insert a padlock and lock both of your hands with the padlock. Having handcuffed him, the shadow will now grab him and say, the journey has started. The two of them will lift up and begin a race at high speed. Backsliding As a Christian, I backslid five times, I backslid twice when I was working in the office and thrice as a pastor. It is possible also that you may have backslid before. A pastor that's beating his wife, has he not backslid? He that embezzles church or public money, has he not backslid? If you have backslid in any way, the Lord is calling you back to return home. He told the children of Israel to return to him, Return, you backsliding children and I will heal your backsliding, Jeremiah 3 verse 22, Why then is this people of Jerusalem slid back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit, they refuse to return, Jeremiah 8 verse 5, types of backsliding. The first type of backsliding is when such an individual has backslidden in the heart and yet nobody knows it. You may have backslidden in the heart and still preaching and conducting evangelism. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. Songs of Solomon 1 6b, The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Proverbs 14 verse 14. The second type of backsliding is when there is noticeable physical evidence. It is the situation when you used to be a prayer warrior and a very strong man of God, such that when you go on your knees to pray, you can pray from morning till evening before standing up. But now, the only time you pray is when you are in the church and leading prayer session, or the prayer session being led by someone else. If you find yourself in that position, you have already backslidden. A Christian or a man of God, who enters a public transport or place and can no longer preach the gospel, a Christian or a man of God who can no longer do personal evangelism, has he not backslidden? Once I was in a vehicle going to Lokoja, I was not preaching but listening to a message. But I heard, Abraham, you are now a big man for you can no longer stand to preach. Immediately, I stood to my feet and started preaching not knowing that there was a man in that vehicle who was going to commit suicide because of what he was going through in his life. If a Christian or a minister of God has become so big that he can no longer do personal evangelism again, that person is already a backslider. When such an individual has been reading the Bible very well before, but now he no longer has the urge to read the Bible anymore. Anytime he makes an attempt to read, he will just sleep off, that is a sign of backsliding. That person may be behaving anyhow in the church and will not even take any correction. He or she will be living in untruthful and or immoral life. The third type of backslider is that that person has outrightly and stubbornly stopped coming to church and is deliberately forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Hebrew 10.25, In the name of Jesus, I pray for all backsliders, that the God who returned me to himself after backsliding, will return you in Jesus' name. Chapter 4, The Journey to Heaven what I discovered on my way to heaven was that everything is like being remote controlled. The journey on the way to heaven is at a speed you cannot control. As you are going at a high speed, you enter into a room. 
Inside this room, there is a very big television, and showing on this television is a woman who is lying down flat and with some children would be coming out of her. As the child is coming out, the shadow will ask you, who is this? You say, I don't know. Then the shadow will say, that is your mother and that is you coming out, as you were being born slash delivered, your naming ceremony as you grew up. You will see everything till the year of accountability. What is the year of accountability? It is the year children being to understand sin, and that same year heaven begins to record slash count the sins. There are times when a child pinches you, he will be smiling and you too will lovingly pinch him back and he thinks you are playing. But the moment the child understands what sin is when he pinches you, he would run away. The cue of the dead. Your shadow will hold you saying. Son of man, the journey is to the junction of separation now. The two will take off at a very high speed, and suddenly they landed at a point where there were so many dead persons queued on a line that you cannot see the end of the queue. You are the last to come and so you are at the back and within that minute of your arrival, when you look behind you some other dead persons that must have lined up behind you will be more than 5,000. That is where I discovered that there are about 5,000 die every minute. They all, all sinners, move with speed, I mean with jumping speed, as they go on the same line, naked and panting. The shadow will be by the right side of the dead person and the shadow will be speaking with his mouth and the dead with his mind. The shadow will be discussing with the dead saying, Do you remember all the evil things that we have done? Do you know why the dead will not speak with his mouth, but with his mind? It is because the conscience does not lie. Whatsoever you have done, your conscience will agree with your shadow. At a point in time, the shadow will stand still and say, Son of man, I can no longer continue with you in this journey and I want to go and report to the Maker, all that you have and I have done on earth. The dead will be pleading, please don't go, and the shadow will say, sorry, here there is no disobedience, it is only on earth that there is disobedience. Immediately, he will just disappear into thin air. The two sides. The dead will be moving on and if he doesn't move fast enough, other dead will begin to push him, until they get to a place with an inscription welcome to the point of separation. By one corner is a signpost with an inscription, wide is the way that leads to destruction and many people will be going through that place. On the other side, is also an inscription saying, narrow is the way that leads to eternal life, but few that go through it. On the other side is a very tall demonic spirit, with scattered teeth, fire eyeballs, his hair is like dreadlock of a madman of many years, he has a spear with him and all he does is to mockingly welcome people to hell. There is an angel at the other side, he has a golden crown surrounded by stars, dressed in a white gown, I mean pure immaculate shining white robe, wearing gloves, a golden belt, and golden shoes. He has crosses all over him, on his forehead and one cross was attached to his belt. All that he does is to say hallelujah, that narrow path beside him is so tiny that two people cannot move in at the same time, and you cannot go with any luggage. Suddenly, I saw a multitude that cannot be numbered, being separated to the left side and they were going to hell in multitudes. In heaven, there is neither day nor night, it is always bright. Now reflect this in retrospect to our own world, a day means morning and night. In heaven, on a very good day only five people might make heaven, sometimes nobody makes heaven at all. But on the other side to hell, the multitude that troop in there is like the sand on the seashore. Remember I told you about 5,000 people are trooping to hell every minute. Now, multiply that by 60 minutes, which is an hour, and then multiply that by 24 hours, that is, a day. Can you now imagine the number of dead per day? Turning to the left side. When you get to that junction of separation and you move left to hell, that wide road is a very smooth road. But immediately you move into the road, there are so many thorns, like nails on the road, to an extent that when you take a step, it is always on the nails that seem to be everywhere. No matter how you move, you are always stepping on the nails. And as you turn into the road that leads to hell, it is on high speed, and by then, you will be hearing the groaning and agony of people in hell. Some have cried and they are tired of crying. I did not go to hell, but it was revealed to me in heaven. But what you know in heaven is different from what you know on earth. As soon as you get to heaven, everything will be open to you and you understand easily. Our wisdom here is that of humans, but that of heaven is of God. Before you enter the fire, you will be hearing lots and lots of lamentations, please help me, take me out of this fire, please I am hungry, I am thirsty, please help me, some of them will shout and say. They preached Jesus to me and I did not accept him. 
Some will say, I accepted Jesus before, I backslid, please come and take me out of this fire. You will see the newcomers going into hell and continue to hear such comments and shouting too. Turning to the right side. At that junction of separation, I have told you what happened when I got there. I turned to look at that demon on the other side, I became very afraid, for he was very intimidating and his face was scary. But I turned to the right side and it was because I obtained mercy. My prayer is that by the grace of God, we shall all obtain mercy. I was following the narrow path and there was this great wall that was very tall that had no end. You see on your way to the heavenly kingdom, it is the Almighty God Himself that opens the door because there is no door and there is no key to open the door. Open to me the gates of righteousness, I will go into them, and I will praise the Lord, this gate of the Lord, into which the righteous shall enter, Psalm 118 verses 19 to 20, but as soon as you get there, the wall will just open slightly, and before you will look back, the wall and the door have been shut. The same narrow road I was following before was where I came back to again. There are about fifteen halls, palaces, to pass through before you get to the gate of heaven. Sin revisited at the hall of salvation. As I was going, I saw a very big mansion, with a very big inscription that said, Welcome into the palace of salvation. Your sins shall be revisited before you can proceed further. I met so many dead people there shivering profusely. At this point, I now understood the scripture in Isaiah 33 verse 14, The sinners in Zion are afraid, fearful as half, surprised the hypocrite. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? We were all shivering. One angel was standing in front very far from us, with his hands folded. As soon as somebody's name is mentioned, for example, Abraham Yakubu and I answered sir, a voice came from heaven saying, you were saved in so-so year, in so-so month, in so-so week, so-so day, so-so hour, so-so minute and so-so second. All those things we did not regard on earth were taken into serious consideration in heaven. Then the angel will say, your sins shall be revisited before you can continue. Immediately when your name is mentioned, you will see yourself at the feet of the angel standing. The angel will bring his face from heaven down. There is a great shining reflection from his eyes. His sparkling flaming eyes will be coming down gradually on the dead standing before him, and at that moment, the dead standing before him will be shouting and crying, even at that, the angel will not consider his crying but will look at him with those sparkling flaming eyes from head to toe. On the other side is a very big television screen. Then the angel will look at the screen and immediately all the sins of that person will appear on the screen. Do not misunderstand me, there was a moment when you were saved and all your sins were completely forgiven. After your salvation, all the sins you have committed after your salvation and you did not repent of them before you died, which might be 20, 30, 10 or any number, will appear on the television screen. Once your sins appear on the screen, all the angels will shout and the ground will be vibrating. Please, listen to this, the angel will now ask you, why were you not cleansed in the blood of the Lamb before you got here? That person will be pleading, please, help me. The angel will shake his head saying, it is too late. Look my brethren, if you are going to cry, it is better you cry here on earth and now, so if you want to repent, you better repent now. Remember I have told you that I backslid thrice and my actions then were terrible, but when I was at Aegean, Ecate, I had all my family present at one gathering and I confessed all my sins before them all. The Bible says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Proverbs 28 verse 13, immediately the angel says, It is too late, a sudden sound will come from high above like a thunder saying, Depart. Then a storm will lift that person up and will fling him into hell, and the next person will be called. At this moment everybody will be shivering because you don't know who will be called next and what will become of such a person. But certainly, I became very afraid of something we take very important here on earth, which is our titles, I forgot that I was a pastor. My people, whatsoever you are here when you get there, you will forget everything that you were or had. They were not even calling anybody by title, not even pastors, reverends, bishops etc. Everybody shall be called by his, her own name because whatever you are on earth ends here on earth. The judgment was so hot. Another name will be called, and immediately a sin is discovered in his life, they will shout depart, and that person is off to hell. A general overseer that missed heaven. They called one man of God in our midst, a minister and he was shedding tears. 
This man was an old man, he has been a pastor for 36, 36, years and a general overseer, g.o. Then the angel looked at him from head to toe, he said, what a pity. When he glanced through the television screen, it was only a bit of anger that condemned this man. The angel shouted and said, O you servant of God, upon all your suffering, why didn't you deliver yourself from this anger, why didn't you wash with the blood of Jesus from this anger before you got here? The elderly man was pleading, saying, Please, it was the devil, it was the devil, it was the devil, please help me. And the angel said, If you see the devil, can you confront him? The man said, Yes I will. The angel stretched his hand and the devil appeared, he was very tall and black, longhorns and wearing a red and black garment. The angel asked Lucifer, Do you know this man? Lucifer said, Yes, and the man of God began to cry again. Then Lucifer said, I know him very well, he has even destroyed my work for a long time. The angel asked the devil why he did not allow the man to escape from the spirit of anger. The devil now faced the man and said, Is it true that you sincerely wanted to escape from the spirit of anger and I refused? Look at me very well, look at my clothes, one part is red and the other is black, and I have many clothes. The day I refused you to escape from the spirit of anger, what was the color of my garment that day? The old man was confused and was looking left and right, and suddenly, the devil disappeared. After the departure of Satan, suddenly a voice came from heaven with anger, and you can even realize that the voice must have been with great anger, saying, Depart. The storm came and lifted up the man, and he was crying in agony, saying, Please help, please help me, oh, oh. immediately, the man was sent into hell just because of the spirit of anger. At this juncture, I want us to sincerely pray. If you know, you still engage in sins, grudges, quarrel, anger, unforgiveness, immoral life, fornication, adultery, or you tell lies or any kind of sin in your life if you can remember any sin in your life, say to yourself, I will not deceive myself. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 verse 9 A woman at the hall of salvation. There was a woman that was called upon. Please brethren, when it is time to pray, I would like us to do exactly what this woman did. Let me tell you something before I continue on the issue of that woman. It was not when that woman got to that place that she got mercy, but it was the way she pleaded for mercy before she died that made her obtain mercy. It was when she was on the hospital bed, and when she was told that all medical efforts had failed, and upon hearing this information, the woman started to ask for mercy before her death. Can you hear me? Praying for mercy after death does not work. Mercy only works before death. Two things cannot affect the dead, prayer, the period of prayer, is over. Curse, no matter the amount of curse on a dead body, it is all in vain. All those prayers that we pray at the burial ground or put on posters, for example, rest in peace, are all in vain. Once a man dies, that is the end. It is here you have the grace, here you have mercy, here you have favor and all the love of God and all other things are only relevant here on earth. But immediately you depart from here, it is judgment without mercy. Let us understand that it is not about being a pastor, bishop or any other position in life, as soon as you depart from this world, judgment is waiting for you. And as it is appointed for man to die once, but after this is judgment. Hebrew 9:27. The woman I was telling you about, she was shivering and praying continuously, Jesus help, Jesus have mercy, Jesus save me, and suddenly, her name was called. Though I cannot recollect her husband's name, she was called Elizabeth with a maiden name, and she answered. Then she was told the time and period she got saved and she responded, Yes my Lord. Before the angel could bring down judgment on her head, she cried, Jesus help me, and suddenly Jesus appeared in our midst. My people, as soon as Jesus appeared, the crown of thorns on the head of Jesus was much more than what we used to read or watch. Only God knows where those Roman soldiers got that crown of thorns from. The thorns were stuck into his head, all his body was full of cutless wounds, only God knows with what material they used in cutting from head to toe. Brethren there is this film titled, The Passion of the Christ. In that film, they really tried to reveal his suffering, but Jesus suffered much more than that, by what I saw at the Palace of Salvation. He was 100% naked, no clothing at all, and his body and skin were battered. All these Jesus suffered for you and me, non entities, but loved by God, John 3 verse 16. So when she shouted, Jesus have mercy on me and Jesus turned to her, she fell at his feet. 
Jesus then lifted her up and he cleaned her face with his blood-soaked hand. At the moment Jesus arrived, all the angels in that palace went on their knees to worship him, all the dead went on their knees, I too went on my knees and we all bowed down our heads. Brethren maybe for this purpose, this book, I managed to raise up my head and I was watching all the happenings, when Jesus used his blood to wash her face, the woman turned into the glory of Jesus. The Bible says in 1 John 3 verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that, when he shall appear, we shall see him as he is. As soon as they both turned into the same glory, the two were then lifted up and there was a welcome song in heaven, that same song came down into the palace of salvation. When they had gone, the judgment became faster and I was panting and crying, and, and, and as I was crying, those angels were shouting, Depart, on every judgment they were passing. Meaning they were sending them all to hell. I became more afraid, panting and shivering. I started remembering all my sins in the church, when some children will bring some lost but found money to me and I will tell them, go and buy sweets with it. I started shivering, saying, I am in trouble, I am in trouble. Brethren, the judgment became so terrifying. My turn at the Hall of Salvation. When it was my turn, I never thought or believed I could proceed because I knew my way of life before that moment. But do not forget that when I was about to be involved in that accident, I said some prayer points and I ended the prayer by confessing all my sins that I had committed to God. The conclusion of my prayer was, since the day I was born, until this very moment, anything that could make me miss heaven when I die, Lord, forgive me, wash me with your blood. This was what I was saying when the accident occurred. When they called, Abraham Yakubu, I came forward and the voice said, You were saved on August 12, 1978, at Four Square Gospel Church, Numbers 18, Raphael Crescent, Mafaluku, Ashadi, Lagos. At this moment, both my ankles were hitting one another. But what baffled me most was that his, angel, judgment eyes that he was using before, that were so terrifying and like a powerful torch straight into your eyes, was now turned into angelic eyes and it came down on me and surprisingly, the angel shook my hands and congratulated me and said, Proceed. There are only two words that are said to the dead in the palace of salvation and they are either depart or proceed. Sin revisited at the hall of restitution. So when he, angel, said, Proceed. I was looking at myself and thinking that the angel might change his mind, but the next person was already being attended to. When I got to the wall, a door opened and I went outside. And immediately I stepped outside the door, that same narrow road I was following before from the junction of separation was where I found myself and I kept following the narrow path again. Right ahead of me, I saw a very big mansion with an inscription welcome to the palace of restitution. Your sins shall be revisited before you proceed further. Listen to me, because there is restitution in the Bible, therefore there is room for restoring what you have stolen or someone else's property that was left in your care. Please, return them back to the owner now. Think of anything that doesn't belong to you which is with you, wristwatch, sunglasses, clothing, Bible, handset, money, cassette, CD, DVD etc. Please return everything that does not belong to you before you get to the palace of restitution, and it can only be done now before you die. Even if you spend government, church or somebody's money in a wrong way, you must return them. If there is anything in your custody that does not belong to you, even as a minister of God, I know this is ridiculous, you must return it. If you are in a secret cult or slash and you engage in fetish practice, I beg you, renounce them and destroy those things with fire before death comes, because, if death comes and meet with this dirty character, then you are indebted. And certainly, you will be weighed in the balances and, will be, found wanting. Daniel 5 verse 27 If you have not paid the dowry on your wife, go and pay it now because you are in debt. Please tell any wife that if she is collecting the family upkeep money from her husband and she decides, by her natural wisdom, to do contribution with said money, tell her that that is stealing and she must return them all to her husband with apologies and ask for forgiveness. Likewise, a husband that is stocking away money somewhere without the knowledge of his wife must go now and reveal the secret by letting her know. This is because they are no more twain, two, but one flesh. Matthew 19 verse 6 a husband that borrowed money from the wife without paying it, should go and rest it now before it's too late. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, if he returns from his sin, repent, and do that which is lawful and right, live righteously, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again, rest everything that he had robbed, 
walk in the statutes of life, without committing iniquity, not presently living in sin, he shall surely live, go to heaven, he shall not die, not go to hell. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him, he hath done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. Yet the children of thy people say, The way of the Lord is not equal, but as for them, their way is not equal. Ezekiel 33 verses 14 to 17, so from Ezekiel 33 verses 14 to 17, which is one of the whole counsels of God, restitution then is one of the conditions of getting into heaven. A woman at the hall of restitution. A woman came into the room of restitution. This woman lived a life that pleased God, and she was so humble. But the husband was a wicked man. When the angel said, You cannot go, you cannot continue any longer. She shouted, Please, have mercy on me. I used all my life to please God. The angel said, Truly, all your life you have lived a life that pleased God, but look at what happened. Because Jesus Christ said that anything done in the secret will be revealed openly, so we were watching it on the screen. In the morning of that particular day, she came to her husband for money for food and he gave her a little amount. But she told her husband, Truly, this is small. She now faithfully gathered her husband's clothes to wash and discovered that there was 27,500 Nigerian Nairas in a pocket of one of his trousers and took 7,000 Nigerian Nairas from it. Before God and man, she did not buy anything for herself, not even a brazier, but used the money to prepare food for the children, herself and her husband. So she said, Please, I did not do anything evil with the money. And heaven said, It is true that you did not buy anything personal with the money but used it to cook food for your family, but did you tell your husband that you took 7,000 Nigerian Nairas from his pocket? And don't forget that we are in the hall of restitution. A thief will not enter heaven. And with that, the voice said, Depart. A general overseer at the hall of restitution. A man, a minister of God who lived a holy life and preached the sound word of God was called. When he heard that he would not be able to proceed further, he asked, Please, what did I do? I lived all my life to please God. When his daughter wanted to get married, he took money from the church's purse and added it to his own money for the wedding. As the geo nobody asked him what the money was meant for. At the end of the year, the church's account was read and there was no specification that that particular money was used for the geo's daughter's wedding, and so it was put as miscellaneous expenses. And the geo said, but, I did not hide it, the elders were there when the account was read. And he was told, did you specify it? And with that, the voice said, depart. An incident happened to me at my Igbita church's branch, Lagos State, Nigeria. When I got to Iana, Apaja, I bought two handkerchiefs, I gave one to my pastor and I kept the second handkerchief. Before God and man, I never knew I had a third handkerchief by mistake and I righteously paid for only two. During the revival, right there on the altar, I heard a voice, Abraham, if you die now, you are going to hell. I said, what is my offense? The voice said, check your pocket. When I did, I saw the third handkerchief in my pocket and I was bitter and embittered. But I said, I never knew. And the voice said, it is because you don't know, that is why I am telling you. Go and return that handkerchief back to the owner. And not only that, you must come and confess in public that you are a thief because you stole a handkerchief. To this story, there are people who can testify to it that I openly confessed in the presence of the people of God that I was a thief who stole a handkerchief. The first day, second day, and the third day passed and I had not returned the handkerchief. But on the fourth day, I got to Iana, a paja where I bought the handkerchief and made an attempt to return it. Immediately when I paid for that handkerchief, I heard a voice saying, Now Abraham, if you die now, you will go to heaven. Please my people, what about those three days of my revival meetings, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? What if I had died during the revival? I would have gone to hell. Please, if there is any property in your care that does not belong to you, please go and return it now. When it was my turn at the Palace of Restitution, I did not stay long at all. I got my salvation at Foursquare Gospel Church before I started messing around. Remember, I backslid five times. Before I started to backslide, I was attending Deeper Life Bible Church for about ten years, so I understood the lesson or teaching of restitution before I was told to proceed to the next level. All these were as a result of the mercy of God upon my life. Sin Revisited at the Hall of Forgiveness 
As I left there, I got to another palace called the Palace of Forgiveness. In this Palace of Forgiveness, it is boldly written, unless you forgive others, you cannot be forgiven. If there is anyone who has offended you and you did not forgive that person, this is the junction that will lead you to hell. If your wife has offended you, you must forgive her, forbear and restore fellowship with her. If she is not there with you, it is not just forgiveness, you will also call her on the phone and tell her that you have forgiven her because you do not want to go to hell. I remember I once offended my wife, I apologized nine times and prostrated to her. But she said, my dear, you did not offend me. I said, please, my wife, don't kill me. I offended you, you must forgive me. The ninth time, she now said, oh my husband, we offend God and he forgives our sins, talks less of we humans. I have forgiven you. In heaven, there is a big chain used by Jesus to chain those that refuse to forgive. The chain is our Lord's prayer, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Matthew 6 verse 12. What this verse means is that Lord, when I get to the palace of forgiveness and I have forgiven all my offenders, let me escape your judgment, but if there is anyone I have not forgiven, O Lord do not forgive me too. That is the meaning and it is a chain in the palace of forgiveness that will send people to hell. There was a man there. He and his wife had a quarrel and they have even settled the quarrel and reconciled. But whenever his wife did something, he will always refer back to that incident. And he was told, if truly you have forgiven her, why are you still using it? It proves that you have not forgiven her from your heart. This is what sent the man to hell, because of Matthew 18 verse 35 So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive, not everyone his brother their trespasses. Sin revisited at the Hall of Giving. Then we left the Palace of Forgiveness and proceeded to the Palace of Giving. In the Palace of Giving, any Christian who has not been giving to the work of God will go to hell from there. Imagine a believer in the church, and an announcement is made for a certain thing and the certain amount of money needed to execute that thing, and the believer has the money in his pocket or bank account and hypocritically pretends not to have heard. Such a person will go to hell from that palace of giving because James 4 verse 17 will come to pass. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. James 4 verse 17, the most unfortunate issue was that of a Christian that does not pay the tithe, and probably believing that tithe is an Old Testament command. The way we regard armed robbers of this world is the way they regard a Christian who does not pay tithe in heaven, Malachi 3 verse 11. I used to think that my tithe was just because of the windows of heaven to be opened unto me for blessing that there will not be enough room to receive it, Malachi 3 verses 10 to 12. But in heaven, the tithe is more than that, because according to verses of Malachi 3 verses 8 to 9, if you pay your tithe, you are first of all not robbing God, imagine robbing God, and you are not cursed by God before you even talk of blessing. So it is basically the principle of total obedience unto God, because, to obey God, is better than sacrifice of what you do, and to hearken than the fat of rams. 1 Samuel 15 verse 22, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he guilty of all, James 2 verse 10, sin revisited at the hall of works. When we left the palace of giving, we proceeded to a palace called the palace of works. Don't forget what Paul said 1 Corinthians that every effort of every child of God, be you a pastor, evangelist, bishop etc., that every work you have done for God will be tested by fire, please read 1 Corinthians 3 verses 12 to 15. 1 Co 3 12 Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. 13 Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. 14 If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. 15 If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. In this palace of work, when they mention somebody's name, as you are approaching, there is a room not more than 8 feet by 8 feet and you go inside. Before you enter, somebody has always been behind you since you died and you won't know that he has been following you. He is standing close behind you like a shadow. As you enter into that room, that person will come in front of you with a portfolio in his hand, raised up to your face and writing your handwork on earth. There is a golden table and the portfolio will be placed on it. The door will be shut behind you and suddenly the whole surrounding of that room will turn into fire and gradually the flame of that fire will be going down and finally it will quench. 
Then you will see if the work that person has done on earth is wood, grass, hay, or stubble, the flame will consume it. But if it is gold, silver, or any precious stone, another door will be opened unto you and you will still find yourself on that narrow road again. But this is what happened to me when I got there. I saw a little stone not too big and it landed on my palm. I became very happy and as I was rejoicing, the stone lifted up and was going again. But I understood very well that it means my work has gone to wait for me in paradise since I am still on a journey, but my work has gone ahead of me. When I left the palace of works, I got to a palace called the palace of vain words. Sin revisited at the hall of vain words. In this palace of vain words, once you enter, there is a television on one side, and then you will stand on the other side. When it is your judgment time, you will see all the idle words you have said here on earth. If that person has repented from those idle words he has ever spoken, the blood of Jesus will come down on the screen and wipe them away. So, if that person has never said any evil word before his death, the television screen will be clean and that person shall be told, proceed. But if you have ever said any idle word and repented of them, and during your journey in the world you say some other idle words without repenting of them, they will be written on the screen. Those who have not repented of their evil talks, and even those that repented and committed again the sin of idle words, will all go to hell. Remember David said, O Lord, my Savior, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. Psalm 19 verse 14, And Jesus said, Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Matthew 12 verse 36, When I got there, my people, again God showed me mercy. The angel shook my hand and said, Proceed, and I proceeded to another palace called the Palace of Accountability. Sin revisited at the Hall of Accountability. In this palace of accountability, all the evil deeds and thoughts you have done while on earth you did not confess for the blood of Jesus to wash them, you will then start confessing them one after the other, those that you killed, lied against etc., you will confess everything. As you are confessing your sins, besides you as a pillar and a computer and an angel standing beside as you confess, everything will be written and recorded on the computer. After confirming that everything is correct on the report, then there will come a voice from heaven saying, because of all these evil characters of yours while on earth, take the path that is equal to your character, depart to hell. At the Hall of Separation, Commitment and Self-Sacrifice From that palace, we proceeded to the Palace of Separation. In this palace, anybody who has not separated himself for God, even if he is a minister of God, he, she cannot make heaven. Because of our time now, I will go ahead to say that I proceeded to the Palace of Commitment. In this palace, you are going to be examined on how committed and dedicated you are. If your dedication and commitment is not 100%, my brother and sister, the result is hell. We proceeded to another palace called the Palace of Self-Sacrifice. If your self-sacrifice is not 100%, brethren the result is hell. In all these things that I am saying, the Lord is my living witness that they are all true. In the name of Jesus, I pray for myself and for every one of you reading, that you will not regret working for God. At the Hall of Worldliness We got to another palace called the Palace of Worldliness. In this Palace of Worldliness, once you get there, you will see yourself on television showing all of your activities on earth, like how you wear your clothes etc. Some pastors with funky hairstyles, their case was very fast, because they go straight to hell. Those that use a skin lightening cream to alter slash change their skin color, make up with jerry curl hairstyles, wearing of mini skirts and nude clothes, will all go to hell. Please, my fellow ministers of the gospel, some of us pastors are very good with high moral life standard, but the members of our church misbehave and dress anyhow and the pastor will not correct them because of money. Let me tell you, that pastor will go to hell. Please do not allow your members to entice you with money that will lead you to hell. A certain woman was shouting, I will never forgive my pastor, though it was too late for her to forgive, because when she was still alive she attended a revival meeting where she has the word about the end time. She gathered all her belongings, including jewelry, bags, shoes, and clothes that did not benefit a Christian and set all on fire. She started dressing normally as a child of God. One day, as we saw it on the screen, the pastor of her church saw her and said, Sister, what happened to you? She explained what happened at the revival meeting she went to and said, My pastor, let me tell you, you are not telling us the truth about the way of the Lord here. The pastor said to her, Oh my God, you have gone to worship with all those Orthodox churches, for God has nothing to do with your way of dressing because you have believed Him in your mind. 
Because of what the pastor said to her, she went back home and started dressing in her old worldly ways again. After service one day, on her way back home, she got involved in an auto accident and she died and went to hell after all she had been through. It was inside hell she was crying, I will never forgive my pastor. But brethren it was too late. Whosoever has worn skinny or sexy clothes that exposed their nakedness and has not repented of it, will go to hell. Heaven is holy, God himself is holy, Jesus Christ is also holy, their spirit is the Holy Spirit, there is no dirty thing that can enter there. At the Hall of Unbelief and Fear From there I proceeded to another palace called the Palace of Unbelief and Fear. The Bible says in Revelations 21:8, But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. We are no cowards that should be afraid, we have the spirit of sonship. The cowards and the fearful and the rest of them will go to hell. At the hall of the fruit of the Spirit. We proceeded to the palace of the fruit of the Spirit. In this palace, there are nine of them according to the book of Galatians 5 verses 22-23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Eat of the nine fruit of Spirit, for if anyone is missing, my brethren, it is straight to hell. It must from love, the first, to the last, none must be missing. At the Hall of Holiness. After that, the Palace of Holiness. It was boldly written Welcome to the City of the King of Glory. No unclean thing will ever go in and your sin shall be revisited before you can enter. As you are coming out from the last gate, a white robe will just cover you. From all the halls, palaces, you have been coming from, you have been naked all the while. In this palace of holiness, if anything called sin appears before you, it is straight to hell. Please now read and pray Paul's prayer in the book of 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 22-23, Abstain from every form of evil. Now may God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. At this palace of holiness, so many ministers of God with different titles on earth, and so many Christians went to hell from there. Pray day and night with crying that Jesus makes you holy in your heart, in your spirit and make you holy in body. Having, therefore, these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1, A woman at the hall of holiness. A woman came to that hall, and she was told, You cannot pass by. And she said, I lived a holy Christian life. What did I do? The angel said, Fold your hands. She folded her hands, and the angel said, Open them. When she opened her hands, twelve sticks of matches were in her hands. And the angel said, Where did you get these twelve sticks of matches? Then she said, My neighbor gave me a box of matches to light my stove, because I did not have any. I lit one and it did not light, but the second one was used to light the stove. And then, she took out twelve extra sticks and put into her own matchbox without telling her neighbor. But the angel asked her, Did you tell that you removed twelve sticks of matches? And she said, I did not. The angel now said, Look up and read. And she read, No unclean thing will ever go in. And the angel said, How many unclean things did it say? She said, Only one. The angel now said, How many matches do you have? She said, Twelve. And then the voice said, Depart. A pastor at the Hall of Holiness. A man of God came, who suffered a lot in the ministry. You will be seeing everything on the screen, he had a farm beside the church. One day he was tilling the farm and found where a fowl laid for eggs inside his farm. He took the eggs, cooked them and ate them. That was all. When he got to the angel, he was told, you cannot enter. And he asked, please, what did I do? The angel said, fold your hands. When he did, four eggs appeared in the hand. The angel asked him, where did you find these eggs? And he said, I was weeding on my farm and because I did not have food to eat, I took the eggs. The angel said, are you the owner of the fowl? Did you even make effort to search for the owner of the fowl? That is stealing. And no thief can enter heaven. And then the voice came depart. 
When it was my turn, the angel present in that palace was like a mirror and all his body was full of eyes and they, eyes, were all blinking, they called him the angel of God. Once you appear and from far the angel is shaking his head, that means you are unfortunate and you are going straight to hell. When I got to him, he was full of smile, he shook my hand and said, you are welcome home. Immediately I left that palace and I was walking along the side of the wall, a door opened unto me and I saw the glory of Shekinah flashing into the place. No matter how powerful you are, you must close your eyes. And suddenly, a force pushed me out and already an angel was standing there, a very tall angel with a white garment, his crown was shining as he stood, his beauty was enormous. Immediately when he saw me he shook my hands and spoke in English saying, Son of the Most High God, you are welcome, and he left my hands. You see where I was standing was full of bright shining gold and I was shouting, Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Beside me was a long pillar and fine flowers planted beside. So I bent down to pick a golden stone and the stone shouted, Hallelujah. I was just wondering what this beautiful place was, and after some time, the angel said to me, Son of Most High, let's go, and I replied, to where? He answered, Home. I said, So where are we? He said, This is our bush here in heaven. And I marveled and said, You mean this is bush? At the Hall of Children. We later got to a city called the Palace of Children. In this palace, anybody who has not taken good care of his, her children will go to hell from that palace. In this palace of children, any form of conspiracy of abortion is called murder. Even if you were a mother of many children and you aborted the last one saying you did not need a child anymore, you have also committed murder. Anybody who has performed or conspired to abort a pregnancy and has not repented of it before death, the person will go to hell. So after passing through the Hall of Holiness, one can still go to hell from the city of the children. Entering inside heaven. We left the palace of children and we got to the place of blood. In that place, there were two angels seated opposite each other and a bottle of blood was placed between them, and they asked me to go and collect the blood. Remember the blood you were redeemed with will appear before you. When I collected the blood and my angel saw, he started jumping for joy and rejoicing and we started going together again and there was this gate we were approaching. At that gate, there was a big mansion in that place. From afar, it looked like a white mansion, but up close it was pure gold. Immediately I entered into the mansion, in front was a very big book and angels standing under some golden trees, though the book was not opened in my presence, I knew it was the book of life and we just passed through and kept moving. At this point, we were already entering inside heaven. Some angels were very tall, and some of the normal height, and there were different creatures there, birds, animals etc. The ground and floors were made of pure gold, the houses were beautiful in different colors. In fact, I was engrossed in looking at their beauty. It is till we get to this level, that we can celebrate. Do not forget the theme, Abraham, don't celebrate your glory yet. Whatever you are doing for God, please don't celebrate yet, except you get to that place in heaven. As soon as I got to heaven I couldn't find my angel any longer, but I was not afraid, because I knew I had already made it. I was looking at a very big mansion ahead of me that was full of glory. When I got to the door, it opened slightly and I entered. Oh my God! Come and see the gathering of holy people, they were all dressed in immaculate white garments and were singing, Hallelujah, 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 when I entered, I saw every one of them with a crown on their heads. Brethren, your major task on earth should be to make heaven. In heaven people are with different ranks, some three ranks, some two ranks and so on, but at least they all made it to heaven, that is ultimate. I pray to make heaven with plenty of ranks and stars because those stars beautify the garment. What is the meaning of these stars? One star is one soul that you won for the kingdom and that person stood to the end. The number of souls you have saved will be attached to your garment as ranks and stars. At this point, the most important thing on your mind is Jesus who redeemed you. So I was busy looking for Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, let me see you. And in all of these searching, there was orderliness, no push, no argument, there was absolute peace. There was a place I got to, I saw the twelve elders on their knees with their crown on the ground, and on the other side, there were also twelve elders also on their knees and their crowns too on the ground. Right there on the ground laid a man with a very large crown, he was tall and handsome. Suddenly my mind told me that that was Jesus Christ. So I shouted, Oh Jesus, I have come, I have arrived. 
He was very tall, handsome, full of glory, filled with humility. Sincerely, I don't know where people get pictures of Jesus they used on calendars and posters. Immediately Jesus saw me, he said, Abraham, 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 you made it here. He just lifted me up and shouted, Hallelujah, with a high voice and that sound of Hallelujah, covered the whole heaven. How glorious shall it be to be in the hand of Jesus Christ. In the palace of the holy people, heaven is filled up people worshipping God, it is unfortunate for you not to make heaven. Heaven is lacking people to worship there, it's left to you check yourself, so that you too can make it and join them. I said, I thought they said our forefather, the father of faith Abraham is here. Immediately, I saw him coming. Whatsoever you think of, it will come to pass. He was full of stars, his hair was white and he was glittering as he was approaching. He had a long white beard with golden parties, all the saints bowed their heads and he went away. I thought of Paul, and immediately I saw him coming too. He was of average height with long hair but bared a little in front but a lot at the back and full of stars. Anybody I thought of, I immediately saw. Suddenly a thought came to my mind, about where I came from, what about the saints that came from there? Immediately I saw one black man coming and I realized that it was Apostle Iadil Babalola, I saw Baba or I George, I saw that old tall evangelist Baba or G. Acapo, he was full of stars, I saw so many holy people. I moved from that palace to another place where there were mansions of the past and present people. I saw the home of the general overseer, G.O., of this church, the mansion was very tall and big. I saw Baba W.F. Kamudi's house in heaven, and also so many other great men of God. But there were some other great men of God that I did not see their mansion in heaven, but I will not mention names. Now they took me to my own house too, and it was under construction. Then I said, let the builders come down now, I have to occupy it. But they said, no, the house must be completed before you can occupy it. Later, they took me where they kept clothes of the holy people and I saw plenty of them that were great, but they said many of the owners of these clothes are in hell, while some owners are still on earth. From there we went to see where they kept diverse crowns, here again, the man cried saying some of the owners were in hell, while some were still here on earth. Mary weeping because of worship. There is a place we went to that I have almost forgotten to mention. It was a big palace with twelve mansions. I asked about the owners of these mansions, and he said, the twelve apostles and one of them is in hell right now. He asked me to look at one separate mansion, it was very big. So I went in to peep and I saw a lady, very beautiful in a white gown and full of glory, but she was crying with a high voice saying, no, please don't worship me, I am not the savior. So I asked who she was and why she was crying. The man beside me said, that is Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, not the mother of God, and she is still crying till this moment because people still worship her. Please, my people, Mary was slash is not our savior, she is just the mother of Jesus by physical birth, but not the mother of our Lord. So I asked, when is she going to stop crying? They said, until the day of rapture. After that, I was taken to the new Jerusalem. Brethren, it is more beautiful than heaven, even much more than paradise. You see, the whole heaven is not paradise, there are streets, towns, and cities. The new Jerusalem was surrounded by twelve walls, with twelve gates, each gate is named after the twelve apostles. We go to a place and the angel was showing me around. He pointed at a mansion and was shaking his head. He said, this is the house of Judas Iscariot, but Judas himself is in hell but his house is here in Jerusalem. Now he looked at me and said, Son of the Most High, it is time to return back to earth. And I was murmuring, Earth, 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 where is earth? Then I looked straight and saw a black place with scanty stars. So I asked the angel, Is this the place you want me to go? No, I won't, you better go there yourself. But for me, I will rather stay here. So I asked him, What are those scanty stars I am seeing all over the place? He said, Those are the very few believers on earth. I started arguing with him that I won't come back to earth. So he opened up my vision of hell and I saw how people were rushing into the fire, how people were crying and shouting for help, so I begged him to close my vision to hell based on the promise that I will come back to earth. He also agreed to come with me to earth and stay with me until we both returned together. Then he asked me to look straight, when I gazed, lo and behold, I met myself on the hospital bed. 
The three things that will make you get to heaven and have a mansion, a godly life, evangelism and soul winning, and spending your money for God. This is my story, fear God and keep his commandments, Ecclesiastes 12 verses 13 to 14. Please, avoid anything that will cause you to miss heaven. ECC 12 13 Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, fear God, and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. 14 For God shall bring every work into judgment, with every secret thing, whether it be good, or whether it be evil. Stay blessed.